make a whole Jack in the Box Merman. <laughs> <laughs> and it's got. It's. It shouldn't exist. Hey, wait, my logo's not that big. And my subscribers aren't that big. I'm in the wrong channel. Oh, that's better. Ah! What up, crew? So let me tell you a quick story about my buddy Paul Jackman and how this whole project came to be. We've both gone to WorkbenchCon in Atlanta for the past couple years, and in the mall, some friends and I happened to find a company that sells Merman. And apparently this is also part of the same demographic that enjoys watching Paul's build videos. They sell a ton of different versions, but none as a reclaimed palette maker. So let's build one ourselves. We first have to model him up from scratch in some 3D software. So I'm chilling with my designer friend Nida at R3D Fox Studios. Here we sketch out a form that is similar to his beautiful physique and apply a tail and tons of color patterns. This takes a couple days, but it's totally worth the 3D file in the end. Then it's off to our friends at Arty Lobster to print this animal. If you haven't seen my previous video, they're a company that print people's pets in all shapes and sizes. They mainly do dogs and cats and put them on a beautiful brass plate, but they've also made horses and pigs and birds. However, this is gonna be the first merman, so we'll see how it goes. The largest thing they can make is 20 centimeters, and of course we're gonna push it to that size. We fill the build plate up as much as we can. This isn't like a hobbyist printer, instead it lays down a layer of powder and then moves the print head over to the sliced area with a combination of ink and glue. Because of the unused powder, there's no need for supports and it can get really high detail. This takes about 12 hours, so it's best to do it overnight. First, we're just gonna open up the printer and just like the SLS kind of powder, it's gonna be a whole block of powder that we need to get the parts out of. So we do that with, I assume, this vacuum hose. Yes, that's correct. Now all of our prints are in this box nestled in a foot of deep, beautiful white plaster. To get our parts, we have to be very careful because they are extremely delicate at this point. So we have Jackman exposed here. The tail of Jack, a Jackman tail. The platform can be raised up to let us vacuum the sides and then hopefully wiggle out the gloriousness of our design. It's like we're digging for bones. Even the brushes on the hoover could break off a piece if it is standing upright, but we can use the computer layout to see where the parts are. We got Jackman. Let's bring him in a little more detail. For this next part, it's very delicate, so we're gonna be fragile. And just like the Jackman leg, I'm thinking these are perfect stickers to warrant for this moment. Now we have to show off that beautiful color. The airbrush will blow away the powder and the vacuum chamber will recycle what's not used for future prints. Most items are printed only a couple millimeters thick, and for any large prints, they will have a two centimeter hole in them. This will help make the object lighter and let us recycle the unused powder inside. It can get quite dusty and feel a little nerve wracking because you don't want to break anything, but such is the life of a true artiste. Jackman done. 
a Jackman out of powder. Okay, so now that we have Jackman out of the printer and of the depowdering, we're still going to tickle and brush him. Uh, God, this is getting weirder and weirder. Um, and to clean off all of the extra powder that did not stick to him. So we just brush him off very lightly, get in all the little crevices and spots and even the little tramp stamp in the back, which we're gonna use to support him. Okay, so now is the glue stage where we are going to harden the piece by dipping it in glue, drying it off, dipping it again for a nice glossy finish, and then letting it sit. And because this is an exothermic reaction, the parts heat up quite a bit and are actually at their most delicate stage. Jackman time. You also don't want to stand directly overhead because the fumes are quite potent and stings the nostrils. But once the glue dries, it really brings out the color and it can be handled without wearing gloves. So in true Jackman style, we are going to use these boards that I found outside from another demolition project. Well, I should say the Skip Bandit found them. This was before I was making videos and my neighbors were throwing away a dresser. So I did a little reclaiming and made some of the boards into a bench. But who cares about that? Let's get back to the merman. All right, let's carve these suckers. Please work. Yes. And as beautiful as this box is, we're gonna have to drill a hole in it to make room for the lights. All right, here we go.
Ooh, that's not good. But we'll fix that. So to make this palette as realistic as possible, I want to put little nails inside each of the boards. And I have these little guys that I'm gonna cut down. And I picked out certain nails that have a real interesting kind of character on the heads of them. So I'm gonna cut them down a little bit because they go a little bit too long on this board, on this palette, and pre-drill some holes and then hammer them in. So let's do that. Wait, I'm not sponsored by Total Boat, so I guess it could be anything. Dust. Okay, enough silliness. Now, the box looks great and all, but it needs some character on the base. So I'm mixing some reclaimed sand with regular Gorilla wood glue to give it an under the sea kind of texture. 
then adding a layer on top to give the appearance of a beautiful, dusty bottom. Man, I'd be amazed if YouTube doesn't flag this just for the audio alone. have here besides a beautiful box well this is just the housing for basically the biggest inside joke 3d printed X carved uh, thing that I've ever done this goes in like this and then we have the housing for all of the 3d printed stuff it would be complete without a Jackman screwdriver which just goes inside there his early version of the Lego man that he did the new wooden knife that he created, really nice work. And, of course, a pallet. And we can't forget about the Jackman leg. Uh, this actually lights up and looks really cool along with uh, the 3D printed um, cover that I made for it. And of course, the piece itself, Mr. Jack in the Box Merman, um, made from the pallet wood to look like his tail and with a little magnet inside. This snaps in here perfectly to line up and everything. Then there's the cover. I first thought, let's just take um, a piece of acrylic from an old 3D printer and put little magnets inside of it along here and this snaps on here like this. Looks fine and then we can put on some lights. but it doesn't look that underwaterish, even if it is raining in London. However, both Jackman and I really enjoy William Osmond's channel, and he just went to Disneyland in Japan, and that gave an idea to this.
little air pump gives it a whole new look, truly underwater, gives it the merman under the sea. And now let's go to Maker Central and see what Paul thinks himself. So we're here at Maker Central. We've got all the main people we want in the room. We've got Chris from Get Hands Dirty behind the camera. Turn it around and give us a show, Chris. It was actually at this point where we lost him. I don't blame him if he was sick of hanging out with us the entire weekend, but I put too much energy into this just to have it slip away. Thankfully, my friends helped me pack it up and head over to the other hotel, which also gave me time to refill the cover with water and bring our main man over to the scene. <laughs> starfish in there. They can float around. That would be awesome. Because they would move around with the bubbles. Yeah. Like, it's December Diamonds is the company at work in Japan that had like one of those panels of all these like mermen. <laughs> you know, are just like, what is this? Yeah. And you just came to mind. I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe it was because you're talking. I don't know if I like that or not. I'm just so glad you're wearing an orange hat. Because I'm matching that. Yeah. There was a whole team behind just Hey guys, thanks for watching this build all the way to the end. Big shout out to R3D Fox Studios, Isotunes, Gorilla Glue, The Crazy Minds at Inventables, and of course, Artie Lobster. And as an Italian, it is pronounced fragile. If you had no idea what was going on during this video, it's probably because you need to check out my buddy Paul Jackman at Jackman Works. If you think my projects are weird, 
He takes it up to 11, Jackman size. All right, let's leave out of here with a quote and I'll see you on the next one. I wasn't recording, <laughs> because I'm confused with my button that is right here. But